So in this video, we're going to be talking about forms of expression that are characteristic of archaic Greece, uh, in particular lyric poetry. One of the things that's uh, really striking about archaic Greece and, and, and classical Greece, which is a sort of stepping up of archaic Greece, is the, the emphasis that's placed on expression, on the awareness of the importance of expression for the, uh, for the development, for, for progress, for the achievement of, of movement. Uh, toward the ideal society, the ideal individual. Um, there are a number of ways in which this is uh, demonstrated. Uh, one of the most colorful is the symposium. Uh, the symposium is uh, a, a gathering of individuals, normally of the uh, leisured class, normally uh, amongst the wealthy, who are uh, you know patrons of cultural expression. Uh, the symposium is a, is a gathering to experience, um, you know, uh, poetry, music, um, entertainment, uh, uh, other kinds of performances, uh, accompanied by the, uh, the partaking of alcoholic beverages, by the partaking of wine, uh, in a, a shared environment, in a shared environment of, of loosening and relaxation. And of course, you know, this is, this is, uh, uh, the, the, the immediate benefit of this is, is entertainment and, and pleasure. And, uh, there's, uh, often a, a carnal element to the proceedings, uh, depending on, uh, you know, who is uh, hosting and what kinds of performances are involved and so forth. Um, you know, but, uh, the, the, the effect of, of this, uh, the effect of the, the prevalence of the symposium is to encourage performance to encourage the development of poetry, song, um, dance, and other forms of expression that are that are uh, absolutely vital, absolutely crucial to the emergence of new ideas. And, and uh, you know, alcohol is is a key part of this for the for the uh, participants as well as for the performers. And there's a, you know, the, there's a very strong sense of, of participation, even though the members of the symposium are, uh, are gathered to, in a, a seated position that are, that is, you know, reminiscent of the ways in which meals are taken and so forth. Um, this is, this is an active engagement with uh, performance and is designed to be, you know, of, of, uh, of, of, of some kind of potency. By the way, uh, this is a good place to mention the way in which uh, men are depicted increasingly in artistic representations, especially depictions on the sides of vases like this. We shouldn't necessarily assume that uh, men are always uh, naked or half naked uh, in, in uh, depictions of men in on vases and and uh, you know, friezes and mosaics and so forth. Uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we see in, in other uh, imagery of, of hoplite warriors being depicted as entirely naked except for their shield and spear. This, of course, is extremely impractical, uh, sometimes with a cuirass, and so they're only naked from the waist down. Uh, likewise, we shouldn't necessarily assume that, uh, that men are always... Um, uh, you know, they're, the, the men are always ripped and buff in the way that they're presented in images like this. The point is that the the artist here depicting this symposium is um, is 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 engaged in the depiction of the ideal male form as part of the encouragement of expression, as part of the purpose of art being to to push things, to flesh things out. Uh, no pun intended, uh, and so. You know, this is a, this is a caveat that, you know, in indications, in, in situations like this where you see, you know, naked muscular men, this is not necessarily what the, uh, what the scene actually looks like. This is an artistic representation that is infused with, uh, the, the Greek obsession with the ideal. Um, the, and there are a number of, of kinds of images associated with the symposium, uh, including the after effects, uh, the, uh, the, individual on the left here is, is obviously the worst for wear and has to be uh, helped in preparing to go home after a symposium. Um, one of the things that emerges as a part of this uh, movement uh, in, 
and, and artistic expression is lyric poetry. What the Greeks are familiar with in the Dark Age is epic poetry. Epic poetry, the chief examples of which are the Iliad and the Odyssey, epic poetry is vast. Um, it is, uh, to, in a certain way, formal, uh, and it is concerned with large themes and, and a large scale. And so, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey tell the story of, of vast events. The, even the Odyssey, which is ostensibly about, you know, one man's journey, Odysseus uh, is 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 framing that journey as a part of you know larger questions as a part of 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 the 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 nature of of human activity of of dealing with one's kinsmen one's fellow citizens with uh, with strangers with you know the um, with the gods and so forth and so on uh, it is concerned with very large questions. Epic poetry is also tends to be from the top down. It takes a larger picture, uh, and it looks at individuals um, like Achilles and, and and Odysseus and Agamemnon, uh, uh, not for you know questions of their character or, or you know uh, dramatization of their uh, of of their uh, behavior and their reactions to situations. Um, but to represent key issues and problems for humanity, um, it tends to see the uh, the struggles involved as, sim- as symbolic, and uh, to deal with the the primary questions of of responsibilities that people have to society and the problems that result when you violate those responsibilities through arrogance, pride, hubris, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, you know, dilettantes and rashness, and so forth and so on. So epic poetry, very large, deals with large uh, questions, is very uh, macro in its approach. Lyric poetry is a, is a uh, is a, a huge counterpart to this. Lyric poetry deals with the personal, it deals with the intimate, uh, it deals with um, you know the the emotional responses that people have. Uh, it can be uh, irrational. It can be uh, even uh, Questioning of uh, needs and responsibilities of others, it is it is uh, it is an expression of the individual, and and represents that same kind of shifting away from the top of society uh, uh, and toward the importance of the individual to uh, pushing society forward. The uh, the kinds of, of of ideas that are expressed in lyric poetry, most especially by the works of Sappho, um, today regarded as uh, possibly the most important of the lyric poets of the archaic period, uh, the works of Sappho represent uh, 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 powerful emotional uh, responses, personal, intimate, subjective, uh, in contrast to the uh, to the to the Grand and the public and the objective of uh, of epic poetry, and uh, in, in this sense, both are needed because each is is a side of how human beings come to terms with their relationship to the world around them. The Greeks are 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 vitally aware, are acutely aware of the necessity for. Uh, for both of these kinds of expressions in order to address the fundamental questions of society uh, um, up to and including the 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 questions of 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 responsibility of of right and wrong of of truth uh, and uh, you know so it's 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 unfortunate that uh, the the works of Sappho are are have come down to us only in pieces, but they are hugely influential in their time. Um, they are representative of an even broader movement of influence in poetry. Uh, they are part of what is emulated by other societies that admire the Greeks in terms of their expression. Um, you know, one of the, those, the most potent ways in which we know about the effect of Sappho is is the extent to which the works of Sappho were later copied by the Romans, particularly, especially by the the Roman poet Catullus, who uh, uh, 
you know, who, uh, who converted uh, actual works of Sappho into works of Latin poetry for the edification of the Romans. Um, and so the, uh, the, the, the same kind of personal um, uh, interest in understanding society that we see in lyric poetry versus epic poetry, that we see in the, the similar contrast between the, the top-down approach of Homer and the bottom-up approach of, of Hesiod. All of these are ways in which the Greeks are exploring knowledge. And uh, it's in the archaic period that we have the emergence of, of one of the earliest of the, the famous Greek philosophers, Pythagoras. What's most striking about Pythagoras, Pythagoras deals with, uh, uh, with, with uh, you know, mathematics and physics, uh, as we would say now, but... Uh, and so, you know, we still talk about the Pythagorean theorem and this kind of thing. What Pythagoras does is uh, he he, uh, he develops powerful theories about the natural world. Uh, in particular, what's most striking, what's most uh, uh, um, indicative of, of what I'm trying to talk about is the uh, the theories that he has about music and harmony. What Pythagoras has to say about music and harmony is essentially to say this is something that is beautiful. This is something that is aesthetically pleasing. This is something that is, uh, um, you know, uh, part of what is the, the the glory of the natural world around us. Uh, part of what is uh, the human mind responds to emotionally, uh, and yet it is not arbitrary. The um, uh, harmony and and the beauty of music can be understood through mathematical equations. It can be understood. It can be taken ownership of. Uh, it means that beauty is not arbitrary. Beauty is not in the possession of the gods or in the, in the possession of the chaos of nature. Beauty is something to which uh, the, 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 the door to which humans can unlock and open. The empowerment of humans uh, has reached a new stage, uh, not just the the ordering of, of nature that comes from uh, the 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 naming and organization uh, of the of the divine world and religion. Um, with with philosophy, humans can surpass even the will of the gods and and take possession. Uh, not just of things that are obviously rational or obviously belonging to humans, like um, like law, um, but to take something that is elemental to the world around us, beauty and song, and understand it and describe it, uh, and and in this way, the the Greeks are on the road to uh, uh, setting humanity as at a much higher place than any ancient people had ever dreamed of. One of the other things that's representative of expression during the uh, archaic period is the kouros. Uh, the kouros is still only um, uh, understood to a limited extent. Uh, in other words, we have these examples of the kouros, and there are certain things that we can say about them. They are, um, they are large uh, statues of, of, of young men. Uh, and they are they are represented uh, representative of the the beauty and youth of uh, of uh, the of, of young men, uh, and uh, we can also say that uh, there is a you know significant uh, uh, Eastern influence in the early development of the choros, so that uh, we know that the Greeks from the late Dark Age onward are trading with the East. Uh, you know, to, you know, maybe to a certain extent directly with Egypt, but certainly with the uh, people in, uh, within the Egyptian sphere of influence in, uh, in Canaan and, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and so there is a, a, an incursion of Eastern influence in, in some forms of art, this form of, of, of representation in particular, but, um, the, the Greek kouros, very quickly departs from the Egyptian model 
uh, not merely in in form, but also in the fact that uh, in the uh, in the an increasing fluidity and increasing naturalness and increasing use of the chorus to express not just a a a, a cut and dried you know a stamped form of of the human male, but uh, to uh, to express vibrancy. And this is something that we'll see even more of when we talk about art during the classical period. Um, uh, there is also a female form called the kore, uh, which, uh, like the male form, you know, this is the the, the koros and the kore are uh, associated with funerary uh, dedications and so forth, especially early on. But what's uh, most striking uh, 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 of all about them is that they seem to be uh, increasingly designed to represent um, the the potential. Uh, in, uh, uh, in, in strength and beauty of, of, that is, that is most potently demonstrated by youth. That uh, the, 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 the power of a young man, uh, or a young woman, uh, and, and what they're capable of, uh, the, the extent to which they can move a society toward the ideal. Um, this representation of the ideal for a purpose. Is part of the um, the the archaic um, push for uh, new forms of expression, new forms of, of the creation of new knowledge and new ideas, and that's that. Society forward, the uh, the kinds of, of of ideas that are expressed in lyric poetry, most especially by the works of Sappho, um, today regarded as possibly the most important of the lyric poets of the archaic period, uh, the works of Sappho represent a, a, a powerful emotional uh, responses, personal, intimate, subjective, uh, in contrast to the, uh, to, the, to the grand and the public and the objective of, uh, of epic poetry. And uh, in, in this sense, both are needed because each is is a side of how human beings come to terms with their relationship to the world around them. The Greeks are are, are vitally aware, are acutely aware of the necessity for uh, for both of these kinds of expressions in order to address the fundamental questions of society, uh, um, up to and including. The, the the questions of 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 responsibility of of right and wrong of of truth uh, and uh, you know so it's 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 unfortunate that uh, the the works of Sappho are are have come down to us only in pieces but they are hugely influential in their time um, they are representative of an even broader movement of influence in poetry. Uh, they are part of what is emulated by other societies that admire the Greeks in terms of their expression. Um, you know, one of the, those, the most potent ways in which we know about the effect of Sappho is, is the extent to which the works of Sappho were later copied by the Romans, particularly especially by the, the Roman poet Catullus, who, uh, uh, you know, who, uh, who converts it uh, actual works of Sappho into works of Latin poetry for the edification of the Romans, uh, and so the, uh, the 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 same kind of personal um, uh, interest in understanding society that we see in lyric poetry versus epic poetry that we see in the the similar contrast between. The, the top-down approach of Homer and the bottom-up approach of, of Hesiod. All of these are ways in which the Greeks are exploring knowledge. And uh, it's in the archaic period that we have the emergence of, of one of the earliest of the, the famous Greek philosophers, Pythagoras. What's most striking about Pythagoras, Pythagoras deals with, uh, uh, with, with uh, you know, mathematics, uh, not just the, the ordering of, of nature that comes from, uh, the, the, the naming and organization, uh, of the, of the divine world and religion. Um, with, with philosophy, humans can 
surpass even the will of the gods and and take possession uh, not just of things that are obviously rational or obviously belonging to humans like um, like law um, but to take something that is elemental to the world around us beauty and song and understand it and describe it uh, and and in this way the the Greeks are on the road to uh, uh, setting humanity as at a much higher place than any ancient people had ever dreamed of. One of the other things that's representative of expression during the uh, archaic period is the kouros. Uh, the kouros is still only um, uh, understood to a limited extent. Uh, in other words, we have these examples of the kouros, and there are certain things that we can say about them. They are, uh, they are large uh, statues of, of, of young men. Uh, and they are they are represented uh, representative of the the beauty and youth of uh, of uh, the of, of young men, uh, and uh, we can also say that uh, there is a you know significant uh, uh, Eastern influence in the early development of the chorus, so that uh, we know that the Greeks from the late Dark Age onward are trading with the East. Uh, you know, to, you know, maybe to a certain extent directly with Egypt, but certainly with the people in, uh, within the Egyptian sphere of influence in, uh, in Canaan and, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and so there is a, a, an incursion of Eastern influence in, in some forms of art, this form of, of, of representation in particular, but, um, the, the Greek kuros, very quickly departs from the Egyptian model, uh, not merely in in form, but also in the fact that uh, in the uh, in the an increasing fluidity and increasing naturalness and increasing use of the chorus to express not just a a a, a cut and dried you know a stamped form of of the human male but uh to uh, to express vibrancy and this is something that we'll see even more of when we talk about art during the classical period um, uh, there is also a female form called the core uh, which uh like the male form you know this is the 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 core gathering of individuals normally of the uh, leisured class normally uh, amongst the wealthy who are uh, you know, patrons of cultural expression. Uh, the symposium is a, is a gathering to experience, um, you know, uh, poetry, music, um, entertainment, uh, uh, other kinds of performances, uh, accompanied by the uh, the partaking of alcoholic beverages, by the partaking of wine, uh, in a, a shared environment, a shared environment of of loosening and relaxation, and of course, you know this is this is uh, uh, the, the the immediate benefit of this is is entertainment and, and pleasure, and uh, there is uh, often a, a carnal element to the proceedings, uh, depending on uh, you know who is uh, hosting and what kinds of performances are involved and so forth, um, you know. But uh, the 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 effect of of this uh, the effect of the the prevalence of the symposium is to encourage performance to encourage the development of poetry song um, dance and other forms of expression that are that are uh, absolutely vital absolutely crucial to the emergence of new ideas and, and uh, you know alcohol is is a key part of this for the for the uh, uh, participants as well as for the performers, and there's a you know the, there's a very strong sense of, of participation, even though the members of the symposium are uh, are gathered to, in a, a seated position that are that is you know reminiscent of the ways in which meals are taken and so forth. Um, this is this is an active engagement with uh, performance and is designed to be you know of of uh, of 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 some kind of potency. By the way, um, this is a good place to mention the way in which 
uh, men are depicted increasingly in artistic representations, especially depictions on the sides of vases like this, we shouldn't necessarily assume that uh, men are always uh, naked or half naked uh, in in uh, depictions of men in on vases. And and uh, you know, friezes and mosaics and so forth. Uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we see in, in other uh, imagery of, of hoplite warriors being depicted as entirely naked except for their shield and spear. This, of course, is extremely impractical, uh, sometimes with a cuirass, and so they're only naked from the waist down. Uh, likewise, we shouldn't necessarily assume that, uh, that men are always... Um, uh, you know, the, the men are always ripped and buff in the way that they're presented in images like this. The point is that, you know, uh, part of what is the, the, the glory of the natural world around us, uh, part of what is uh, the human mind responds to emotionally, uh, and yet it is not arbitrary. The um, uh, harmony and, and the beauty of music can be understood through mathematical equations. It can be understood. It can be taken ownership of. Uh, it means that beauty is not arbitrary. Beauty is not in the possession of the gods or in the, in the possession of the chaos of nature. Beauty is something to which uh, the, 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 the door to which humans can unlock and open. The empowerment of humans uh, has reached a new stage. Uh, not just the the ordering of, of nature that comes from uh, the 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 naming and organization uh, of the of the divine world and religion um, with with philosophy humans can surpass even the will of the gods and and take possession uh, not just of things that are obviously rational or obviously belonging to humans like um, like law, um, but to take something that is elemental to the world around us, beauty and song, and understand it and describe it. Uh, and and in this way, the the Greeks are on the road to uh, uh, setting humanity as, as, as at a much higher place than any ancient people had ever dreamed of. One of the other things that's representative of expression during the uh, archaic period is the kouros. Uh, the kouros is still only um, uh, understood to a limited extent. Uh, in other words, we have these examples of the kouros, and there are certain things that we can say about them. They are, uh, they are large uh, statues of, of, of young men. Uh, and they are they are represented uh, representative of the the beauty and youth of uh, of uh, the of, of young men, uh, and uh, we can also say that uh, there is a you know significant uh, uh, Eastern influence in the early development of the choros, so that uh, we know that the Greeks from the late Dark Age onward are trading with the East. Uh, you know, to, you know, maybe to a certain extent directly with Egypt, but certainly with the people in, uh, within the Egyptian sphere of influence in, uh, in Canaan and, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and so there is a, a, an incursion of Eastern influence in, in some forms of art. This form